Last video, we saw how common functions could be rewritten as power series, and we even managed to do it ourselves for a number of examples. But so far, all of our examples relied on being able to somehow rewrite the function formula in a form that lined up with the geometric series sum formula, because that was the only method we had to convert between algebraic formulas and series. But, as you might have guessed, this method can only go so far, because there are functions, like e to the x, sine of x, and cosine of x, to name a few, that pretty plainly cannot be written in a form similar to 1 over 1 minus x, or at least it's certainly not obvious how. And yet, last video, I showed you the power series representations for several of these functions. So it clearly can be done, so how do we do it? Well, the truth is, the geometric sum method, while very clever, is kind of a hack. It works when it does, but it doesn't really get to the heart of the matter. What's really going on that allows us to get these power series representations at all? As I mentioned briefly last video, the idea is we build up the power series term by term with increasingly better polynomial approximations of higher and higher degree. We start with a linear approximation, then get a quadratic approximation, then a cubic approximation, and so on, and in the limit we obtain the power series representation we're looking for. But, of course, what I did not mention last video was how to derive these successive approximations. We already know how to get a linear approximation, that's the same as finding the formula for a tangent line. But how do we get a quadratic approximation, or a cubic approximation, or a degree 314 approximation? Think again about how linear approximation, or tangent line approximation, works. Let's say we want to find the tangent line to this function at the point x equals 0. Every line is determined by two numbers, its y-intercept and its slope, which I will label as c0 and c1 in this case. The way we construct a tangent line is we make both the y-intercept and the slope agree with those of the target function at the point of tangency. That is, we want the value of the tangent line at x equals 0 to equal the value of the target function at x equals 0. L of 0 equals f of 0. But we also want the derivative of the tangent line to equal the derivative of the target function at x equals 0. So L prime of 0 equals f prime of 0. Writing out the expressions for L of 0 and L prime of 0 more explicitly, we find the coefficients c0 and c1 must be f of 0 and f prime of 0, respectively. Similarly, to obtain a quadratic approximation at x equals 0 for f, we need to determine three coefficients, c0, c1, and c2. We can determine what they are by requiring the quadratic approximation q of x to agree with the target function f of x at x equals 0 along with its derivative and second derivative. That is, we require q of 0 to equal f of 0, q prime of 0 to equal f prime of 0, and q double prime of 0 to equal f double prime of 0. Expanding these out, we get that c0 and c1 are, like before, equal to f of 0 and f prime of 0. But the third equation becomes 2c2 equals f double prime of 0, which means c2 must equal f double prime of 0 over 2. This pattern continues for a cubic approximation. We need to determine four coefficients, c0, c1, c2, and c3, but c0 through c2 are already determined from last time. We just need to determine c3. And we can get that by requiring that the third derivative of the cubic approximation at x equals 0 equals the third derivative of f at x equals 0. Or in other words, c triple prime of 0 equals f triple prime of 0. Doing so, we get 2 times 3 times c3 equals f triple prime of 0, which means c3 equals f triple prime of 0 divided by 2 times 3. And likewise, for a quartic approximation, we need to determine a fourth coefficient, c4, which comes from setting the fourth derivatives of the approximation and f equal to each other at x equals 0. This yields 2 times 3 times 4 times c4 equals the fourth derivative of f at 0, which means c4 is equal to the fourth derivative of f at 0 divided by 2 times 3 times 4. At this point, you might be seeing the pattern emerging. The nth coefficient c sub n of a polynomial approximation always obeys the equation n factorial times c sub n equals the nth derivative of f at 0. 
And solving for c sub n gives us the nth derivative of f at 0 over n factorial. Thus, in the limit, we obtain a general formula for the power series representation of any function. f of x equals sigma sum, from n equals 0 to infinity, of the nth derivative of f at 0 divided by n factorial times x to the power n, which, when written out term by term, is f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus f triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed, and so on. This series is called a Taylor series. Basically, it means the same thing as power series representation. By the way, this notation where we have f with a superscripted n in parentheses is used to refer to the nth derivative of f. Basically, it tells you how many apostrophes you should attach to f if there are too many to write.